Hello friends, schoolsteps.in welcomes you again. In this tutorial, we will talk about detecting location on the Android Wear. Location awareness on the wearable devices enables you to create applications that give users a better understanding of their geographic position, movement and what's around them. With the small form factor and the glanceable nature of a wearable device, you can build low friction applications that record and respond to a location data. Some wearable devices include a GPS sensor that can retrieve location data without another tethered device. And then there are some wearable devices that are dependent on the tethered device for the location. However, when you request location data in a wearable application, you don't have to worry about the origin of the location data. The system retrieves the location updates using the most power efficient method. Your application should be able to handle the loss of location data as well. For example, consider a scenario where the wear device doesn't have a built-in GPS sensor and it loses the connection with its paired device. So your application should be able to handle these kind of scenarios. Now let's proceed with our program. Open Android Studio and create a project with the name current location. Click next. Choose wear here and uncheck the phone and tablet. We will just implement the wear module as the scope of this tutorial is to get the location coordinates in the wear device. Click next and click finish. Now open the main activity.java. Now in this file, we need to create the object of Google API client and we need to implement the required interfaces as we did in the previous tutorials. Let me do it quickly. I have created the object of Google API client right here and I have implemented the required interfaces, connection callback and own connection field listener right here. Further, I have implemented the methods required for the interfaces. Now, as we need to detect the location, we need to implement one more interface right here that is location listener. So we need to say location listener, which is right here. But now if you see this location listener interface belongs to the package android.location, we do not need this. So what we need is the one which belongs to the package android.gms.location. So we need to leave it right here. We need to go to project. And we need to open the build.gradle, which is corresponding to module colon app. Let's open it. Now, if you see right here, the version for the play services variable is 6.5.87, which is the latest one. And there is some problem with the latest one. So we need to shift to the old one. So we can say five dot plus save it and click the button sync. Now, once the syncing is complete, Go to the main activity.java again and right here now try to import the location listener. So if you see right here, we have got another package that is com.google.android.gms.location. So we need this one select it. Now we need to implement the methods required corresponding to this particular interface. So there is only one method that is own location changed. Click OK. Now let's go back to the Google API client. So right here, we need to add one more thing. We need to say dot add API. And in the parameter, we need to pass location services dot API. Now right here, just above the Google API client, we need to make sure if the wearable device has the GPS hardware or not. So we need to put one if condition. We need to say if not has GPS, then display one toast. Let's import the toast. We need to go over it and press Alt and Enter together. Now the method has GPS. It doesn't exist. We need to create it. So right here in the end, let's say private boolean has GPS. And let's say return get package manager dot has system feature. And in the parameter, we need to pass package manager dot feature location GPS, which is right here. Save it. Now next we need to work on the own connected method. So right here, 
After the Google API client dot connect, we need to say location request is equal to location request dot create. So this will give us the object of location request. Further, we need to say location request dot set priority, and let's say location request dot priority high accuracy. So we are setting the high accuracy right here. Next, we need to set the interval. So we need to say location request dot set interval. Let's say two thousand. So that means after every two seconds, it will update our location. And last but not the least, let's say location request dot set fastest interval and uh, let's pass one thousand here. That is one second. Now next we need to use fused location API. To use that we need to say location services dot fused location API dot request location updates. Let's use the first one. So the first parameter is Google API client. The second parameter is location request, which we have just created, and the third parameter is this. So, what exactly request location updates will return? It will return you the pending results of type status. You have to make sure that for the class status, you import the right package. Now, let's run one async call on the pending result as we did in the previous tutorials. So, we need to say pending result dot set result callback. Choose the first one, and right here in the parameter, we need to say new result callback. Press enter, and it will override the method on result for you. Now inside the on result, we need to put one if else condition. So we need to say if status dot get status dot is success. Then let's call the method start location updates. Else we need to display one toast. The toast says failed in requesting the location updates. So what exactly is happening? Once we are connected to the Google API client, we create an object of the location request class. So further on the location request, we are setting the priority and we are setting the interval and we are setting the fastest interval. Now using the fused location API, we are saying request location updates, and we are passing the location request right here, which is giving us the pending result. Further, we are running one async call on the pending result, and inside the own result method, we are detecting whether the call was successful or not. If the call is successful, we need to execute the method start location updates. Now, this method doesn't exist, and we need to implement this method. So, right here, we can say public void start location updates, and inside this method, we need to fetch the location. So we need to say location is equal to. We need to take help from the class location services. So we need to say location services dot fused location API dot get last location and in the parameter we need to pass the Google API client. Next we need to declare one string variable which says location is null. Next we need to put one if condition. And we need to check the location for null. If location is not equal to null, then we need to get latitude and longitude. So we can say location dot get latitude. This will return one double value. Now let's convert this double value to string. In the similar way, let's get the longitude. Now let's concatenate these two string values into one. So we have concatenated lat and longi, and we have put this single value in the location message. Now next, we need to display one toast outside the if condition. Let's make the m capital here. So if the location is not equal to null, the toast will display the updated latitude and longitude right here. And if the location is equal to null, then the toast will say. Location is null. The way we have implemented the method start location updates, let's implement the method stop location updates. So inside this method, all we need to say is location services, which is right here. Dot fused location API. Dot remove location updates. The first parameter that we need to pass is the Google API client, and the second parameter is this. 
Next, we need to override the methods on resume and on pause. Let's do it. Here is the method on resume and here you can see on pause. Select both and click OK. Now inside the on resume method, all we need to say is Google API client dot connect. And the next we need to call the method start location updates. Inside the on pause method, we need to say if Google API client dot is connected, then stop location updates. This method we have just created right here. And outside the if condition, we need to say Google API client dot disconnect. Next, we need to implement the method on location changed. All we need to do here is to call the method start location updates. Next, we need to go to project. We need to expand RES. We need to expand layout and we need to open rect activity and round activity. So in the round activity, let's change the text. Let's call it location updates and let's do the similar change in the rect activity. Next, we need to open Android manifest.xml file right here. We need to add two permissions. One is for the access file location and other one is for the internet. Last but not the least, we need to make an entry for the metadata tag as we did earlier. Let's run our program now. As the emulator doesn't have a GPS, it shows location as null. The quick solution is to connect your cell phone to the emulator and use the GPS or internet of cell phone to get the location. Let's do it. So now let's open the Android VR application on the cell phone. And let's connect our cell phone with the emulator. Click on these three dots and click on the connect emulator. I have already given the TCP command. The phone is connected to the emulator. Wait for some time and the emulator will pick up the cell phone's GPS location. Now emulator is updating location every two seconds. That is it. Friends, with this I take your leave. Thank you so much. Please like our page on facebook.com slash let's android. If you have any query, do write us at info at schoolsteps.in or schoolstepsin at gmail.com. Thank you.